guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. I know it's been a while. I've missed you too. I'm here with the Casio G's One Commando from Verizon Wireless. It's an Android smartphone, but it's a Casio G's One phone. G's One, G's Own. I don't care. I'm saying G's One, which means that it's super rugged. It meets military standards for being water resistant, shock resistant. It can withstand high temperatures, extremely low temperatures pretty much anything. So to see exactly how durable this phone is, I put it through some rugged phone dog testing. So before we get on to the official review of the phone itself, I wanna show you the test footage to see exactly how that turned out. Before we get on to even that, I have to say a special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile. They send us free phones that we can add to our One Pod Bandit game, which is a game where you can win free phones. So one of the great things about Best Buy Mobile is that they sell phones from every major US carrier. So you can go in there and not only compare phones from just one carrier as if you were in a retail store, but you can compare phones from all of the carriers. So thank you Best Buy Mobile for being so awesome. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let's check out the test footage and uh, we'll see how the Casio Commando did under the rugged phone dog testing. Let's go check that, check that out. So all of that aside, I actually was pretty impressed by the phone, I mean, up until that point. And again, I'm not entirely sure what happened, but just everything else with the other tests that I did, and just in testing out the phone in general as a smartphone, I was pretty impressed with it. Now, I have, this is a replacement unit that I got from the PR company, um, but I have the original, the one that actually bricked. And I wanna show you um, basically just what it looks like after I did all of those drop tests. So you can see I, I dropped it a couple of times and rubbed in the dirt. So here on the edges, you can see there's a couple of dents there and nicks, more on the corner here and then on the top. I mean, just, you know, really little things. And of course, I, I dropped it a few times. Um, you know, if you drop it a lot more, it's obviously going to look a little worse. But I mean, for the most part, it looks okay. Um, and obviously, this is nothing that's really going to damage the performance of the phone. And I'm not really surprised by how well it, it held up. I mean, of course, it's designed for that. So, um, but you know, there are some scratches, but nothing that's really going to um, mess up anything. The buttons still worked fine after I dropped it several times. Um, the screen, you won't be able to tell with the, dis with the screen off, but whenever it's on and there's the, the light shining on it, you can see there's just a couple of scratches on it. Not a whole lot, but there were some. That kind of surprised me since Again, it is, you know, Gorilla Glass is supposed to be uh, more durable, but it wasn't something that was entirely noticeable. They were just kind of small, minor scratches, and then just this cosmetic damage on the side. So for the most part, it held up really well. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, whatever it is I did to it made it uh, brick, but for the most part, it still looks pretty good. So here's a replacement. This is the one we'll use for 
the actual review. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, a couple minutes ago, as a smartphone, you know, not just a really rugged phone, but as a smartphone, I was still impressed by it. Whenever I first got it, you know, knew I was going to be doing this review, I thought it would be just another rugged phone. Um, yeah, it's a smartphone, but performance would probably be somewhat subpar, nothing really impressive. But it's actually a pretty decent smartphone and of course you, know, you can see the hardware here is huge and usually phones look really big in my hands because you know I have small hands and so everyone's like that phone looks huge in her hands and usually it's it's not that big it just looks bigger because of my hands but this phone is huge it's really big the footprint is just you know massive mostly because it has to have all of this padding I mean it's five inches by nearly three inches. Um, it's actually a lot thinner than I thought it would be. It's only 0.6 inches thick, uh, which is thick, but I mean, I expected it to be a lot thicker. On the back, you have the battery cover, five megapixel camera. I like these screws, you know, it kind of adds to the rugged impression. The speaker grill is actually on the front. Kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they decided to do that, but you know, it doesn't bother me. There's enough padding here to make it, you know, it still fits there. Um, your typical Android buttons. This display here is a, a 3.6 inch display. And you would kind of expect it to be bigger, you know, if you think of a five inch device, I mean, you could easily have a four inch or 4.5 inch display. But, you know, keep in mind that a lot of that length comes from the padding here. Um, so it's a 3.6 six inch display, has a resolution of 480 by 800. And really the display actually looks pretty good. Um, you know, again, going back to my initial impressions of, you know, what I expected from the phone. You know, a lot of times with mid-range phones, the, uh, the resolution is so low that when you get close to the text, you can kind of see the pixels and, and pictures get kind of grainy, but not so with this one. Text is actually very smooth. It's very bright, very clear. Uh, overall, it just looks great. Um, I'm impressed by the display. I mean, still, you know, it's a pretty standard uh, resolution, 480 by 800, but at least it's not such a low resolution that just right off the bat you can tell that it's a cheap phone. It actually looks pretty good. Now, one thing I notice is that the touchscreen can sometimes be unresponsive. You can see sometimes I have to do a certain action a couple of times to get a response. That's because um, in order to ensure durability, this screen is actually thicker than normal. And so sometimes you have to press harder in order to get a response. Once I realized that, it's not a huge problem because you know, I realized, okay, just sometimes press a little harder. It wasn't quite as frustrating because I knew it wasn't the phone's fault or you know the processor's fault. It's just simply because it is kind of a thicker um, panel. So that's one thing that you may have to get used to, but it's not a huge problem. The processor, whoops, it ships with an 800 megahertz Qualcomm processor and it was pretty speedy. You know, I noticed sometimes there was some lag and uh, you know, you can notice while I'm scrolling here, it's pretty smooth, but I mean, sometimes it's a little choppy. Um, it's mostly when I'm in the home screen and I'm trying to, you know, maybe open an app, you know, scroll through the pages, uh, open a widget. There was just sometimes when it was slightly unresponsive, but for the most part, the 800 megahertz processor does a great job. It's a Qualcomm processor, so you know usually um, they have pretty good speeds. I mean, you know, the Snapdragon processor has a pretty good reputation. So um, nice job on that. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the UI because it ships with uh, Android 2.2. And for the most part, it's stock Android. You can see the notification bar, stock Android. When you go to messaging, it's just the basic, you know, stock Android messaging interface. But Casio has added, uh, you can see sort of the lag there, but Casio has added just a few design elements. I don't think they really add up to a custom UI per se, but it's just a few design elements that really add to Android. Just first of all, on the home screen here, you can see whenever I scroll through at the bottom, it tells you which page you're on. And then once you settle on a page, then that app drawer icon will come back. Uh, the app drawer is, again, just stock Android, so nothing really different there. The, uh, the home screen icon is a little bit different. And then at the bottom, 
you have this phone icon, and then you have this interesting pull-out tab. It actually looks like a little knob whenever you see it closer, but you can just slide it out, and then it brings up a panel of shortcuts. Let me see if I can get the glare off of that. So it brings up a panel of shortcuts. These you can customize. You can drag one to the trash and then add another shortcut for, um, we'll just say maps. And, uh, and then you can rearrange them if you want to. So, you know, very useful, simple, um, but just an easy way to have access to your most used applications. You know, while I'm here, Bing Maps, by default, <laughs> I like the little sound effect there too, it's pretty cool. By default, the phone does use Bing for uh, search and maps. Now you can, it's not locked onto Bing. A lot of times whenever phones ship with Bing, you can't you know, change it to Google. This one, you can easily go to the market, you can download Google search, you can download Google maps, you can you know, delete these widgets and add the Google widgets, and then you can set both Google services as your default service. Um, you know, by going into the settings. So it's not a big deal, but just out of the box, it does ship with Bing.